Let's look at how the parameters of methods and functions should look like. First of all, only specifying the name of each parameter is wrong, because if you don't specify the parameter type, then by default Dart will choose the parameter type dynamic. Therefore, it is always important to specify the parameter type next to the name, and this is what you do for each of your parameters. The same also applies for named parameters, even if you define a default value of type string or a default value of type integer, then Dart will not infer the parameter type based on the type of your default value. Instead, it will choose the parameter type dynamic for each of your values, even if the default value is of a specific type. Therefore, the only right solution is to define the concrete parameter type of each of your default values. Let's also look at the special case of how parameters of constructors should look like. Parameters of constructors should be initialized using the this keyword, which refers to the class fields. And inside of the class fields, we already have defined the type of each of our fields. And therefore, Dart is clever enough to know that this name, for example, has a type string and you don't need to define it anymore inside of your constructor. The same applies to named parameters inside of your constructor. Here you also don't need to specify the parameter type. And the same also applies to required named parameters inside constructors. Here you also don't need to define the parameter type, since Dart will automatically infer this parameter type from your class fields. Alright, so far we have learned that for methods and functions you should always define the parameter type and for constructors you shouldn't define them. Next, in case you pass many arguments to a method, then it is good to change this positional parameters to named parameters. With this you need to define for each argument a name and the argument itself, the value is then easily understandable because we know this value Tim is for example the first name, this value Cook is the last name and so on. While as when you just pass the arguments like this inside, then you don't have this information what the value Tim is, what the value Cook is and so on. So all in all, this code is harder to read because you don't understand directly the meaning what each values mean without looking directly at the method or function signature, while as this is more readable because you directly see, okay, this value has this specific meaning. Of course, if you only pass some values to a method or function, then it is also fine to not use named parameters, or you can also name each of your arguments. Both of it is fine. However, if you pass a lot of arguments to your method, then it is more common to name each of the arguments. Next, you should avoid to describe the parameter inside of your method name. Instead, keep it simple, only use the verb without describing what this parameter is. Let's look at another example to make it more clear. We have a translations class and we describe each of our parameters, so the method name is really long. Let's also look at how this code is normally used. You initialize your class. And then on this object, you call the method at translation or remove translation. And like you can see, this is like really long and it is also repetitive because you know already it is a translation. So why should you simply call it again translation here on the right side? Instead, you can keep it more simple to your translations. You add another translation and from your translations, you remove another translation. So all in all, you see that the readability of this code is better than the readability of this code and it is even easier to understand because we add to our translations a new translation, while as here you add to your translations another translation and you repeat this whole word again. There's also an exception to this rule in case you need multiple methods where each method name describes a parameter in a different way. Let's also look at the implementation of this code. First of all, we create an object of the school class and on the school we call them the add teacher or add student methods, which are two separate methods. Each method name describes a parameter in its own way. 